I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in you. I believe in you. Stand strong. You are powerful. Stand strong. You are inspiring. We are fighters. We are ambitious. We are extraordinary. We are conquerors. Simply, Simply Straight, straight talk, talk, our, our voices, voices will, will be heard. heard. This is Simply Straight Talk. Yeah. Tune in now, you don't want to miss out. Real conversation, plenty motivation. Uh -huh. Keep you thinking and still entertaining. Yeah, I know that you'll enjoy the Mido's free. Your voice is your choice. Hosted by Reggie B, but you already know. And you gotta check them out and how we roll. Hey, ain't nothing off the table. Give it to you straight. Changing your mindset, talking past mistakes. You ain't gotta wait, time to take off. This is Simply Straight Talk. I'm Melissa, and this is the Simply Straight Talk podcast, a podcast for the people. Reggie, Angelique, and I enjoy discussing real-life topics that we as real people who are constantly out here on a grind and hustle deal with every day. Stick around for the real talking tips that will help you rise above the rest. Let's start this show. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Simply Straight Talk Show. This is season 12, and y'all know we always bringing you topics that make you think, stuff that kind of make you just dig deeper into the conversation because it helps you to learn and gives you a greater understanding. And we always use real-life scenarios. So that's why today I want to talk about meeting the right person at the wrong time. But we want to get into some of the mindsets, some of the behaviors that sort of comes along with this. Things that happen when a person meets somebody, they want to meet that, they meet that person and they know that this is the person for me. Like, this is who I should be with. We should be in a relationship. I, I, I see it. I feel it. This is it. Everything in their very being saying is saying, this is who you're supposed to be with. But. Reality quickly comes and pokes them in the back of the head and say, really? Let's, let's take a look at us right now. Don't look at what you think could be. Let's look at what it is right now. And that's what we want to talk about. And how this encounter triggers some behavior that people may not understand about a person because it can cause them to change. Oftentimes, we don't understand why people behave a certain way. And when this happens, it can have a negative effect on other people. It's sort of a, like a little, like a, a boulder rolling downhill. It creates an avalanche. It's taking more stuff with it, but it makes a person act abnormal. And oftentimes we don't think about why people do things. What is the trigger point? What made a person behave the way they are behaving? What is it? What happened? Because we live in a very condemning time right now. We'd rather label somebody and condemn them than to try to understand and really try to figure out like what brought this person to this point in their life. What was the changing point? What bump in the road did they hit that pushed them down on the ground that made them start crawling? And we need to try to understand that because that's the only way you can help people. But I want to kind of bring this into the relationship aspect, too, of what happens when a person meets somebody and they're kind of like, this is the person I should be with. They feel it. They know it. It's something inside you that just lets you know this is who I'm supposed to be with. And there's not an inch of doubt, not one inch of doubt about you're supposed to be with this person. The mental and physical connection is there, but more so it is the mental connection that you absolutely see. Your spirits are talking to each other, but yours is telling you that shit sort of fucked up on your side. But that's what we want to talk about today, man. We want to have a real conversation. We want to talk about these things and we want to really get into this a little bit and sort of dig into sort of the psychological, emotional aspect of it, because you can't grow if you don't understand. You can't be a better person if you don't understand. You can't have good relationships if you don't understand who you are or the behaviors of other people. So 
let's get into this because we want to start off with a little about kind of understanding like, well, put it like this. We are all aware of how the lack of self-esteem, which refers to whether you appreciate and value yourself plays a part because your self-esteem develops and changes as a result of your life experiences and your interactions with other people. Also, your self-confidence which is your belief in yourself and your abilities. This can change depending on your situation. So your self-esteem and your self-confidence really do play a role in how all of this comes about. Now, I mentioned self-esteem and self-confidence because both of them are affected by your physical environments, by the physical environments of your life. Remember, we are all, we all see and presume things about people based on what we observe, let's be honest, in their physical surroundings. This applies to men and women. The fact that men are portrayed as being physical and women are not is a complete myth. Here's the thing. And people say, well, how do you figure that? Think about it when you see somebody. I've actually been to a place, no lie, I, I've been to a strip club where the woman actually sat down beside me like, I can tell by your shoes you do this. I can tell by your watch that you make about this amount of money, by your pants, you know. So basically, she pretty much was trying to, you know, sum me up by making a physical assumption of me. And men and women do it. You can tell when somebody walks inside of a bar, somebody walks inside of a club, nobody is looking at that person and saying, I wonder what their religious beliefs are. I wonder what is their personality type? I'm curious. They're looking at the way they dress, the way they walk. They're listening to how they talk. They are listening and paying attention to the physical aspects of the person. So men and women are physical. What type of car did that person get out of? What type of car is that person driving? What type of clothes? What type of house they have? Those are the things that people look at. And that's why I say that men and women are physical. Everybody in this world is physical. People look at each other and make assumptions about a person based on the fact that they saw that person get out of a car and they might have overheard a joking comment and they assume that he was a jerk or he was mean or she was a jerk or she was mean. People do it all the time. So when we talk about people being physical, it is an aspect that men and women both, both play a part in. Now, if you have healthy self-esteem and receive a low mark, you may think, ah, I wonder where I went wrong. What happened? I found out so the next time I can do better. That's healthy self-esteem. You don't see everything as a downfall, as an end all. Although you may feel disappointed by the low mark, you don't feel diminished as a person. So healthy self-esteem is about you accepting the fact that you may have failed or you may have not met your goal on something, but you have the common sense and the knowledge and the strength that you can overcome it. I can figure out what wrong, what went wrong and I can progress from it. I can learn from it and grow from it. Now, the thing about it is we have to be mindful of the fact that when we're talking about low self-esteem and when we're talking about low confidence, you know, there, there are different things that come into a, come into play. Low self-confidence can result in, you know, like a person being shy, you know, communication issues, difficulty communicating, you know, social anxiety, uh, a lack of assertiveness. You know, those are some of the things you can see when you're dealing with somebody with low self-confidence. Now, low self-esteem may cause you to develop a strong, critical, internal voice. And many of us have this. Many of us have that voice that. It, you know, it tells us, oh, why are you going to the gym? You're not going to lose the weight. Doesn't make any sense. You know, stay in the bed. You know, don't go back to school. It's a waste of time. That voice that's always trying to talk you out of being a better person. So with that, you know, that tends to express itself 
you know, like loudly, you know, when you're feeling distressed and overwhelmed or you're feeling like you're being judged and criticized by others, you know, your own criticizing inner voice can cause significant personal distress by contributing to feelings of sadness, anxiety, and anger within yourself. Believing your inner voice, okay, a negative inner voice, believing your negative inner voice, you know, it may cause you to experience one or more of the following things I'm about to tell you about. Okay, it can cause you to think negative things about yourself. Believe, you know, your negative thoughts are always true. You know, no matter what you say or whatever you hear positive, those negative thoughts, you believe that this is me. This is true. This is me. You know what I'm saying? You know, it may cause you to ignore your strength and abilities, the things that you're good at, the talents you have. You know, if you got you know, just that low self-esteem and that negative voice is speaking to you. Low self-esteem will make you doubt your own self that you don't pursue anything because you don't have it. You don't feel you have it in you when you actually do. You know, it'll make you focus on your mistakes and failings while ignoring the positive. No matter how good things are, you focus on the bad, you know, and you expect the worst. You expect the worst to happen. This is what low self-esteem does. It makes you expect the worst. You know, you try to avoid challenges or situations, you know, where you feel you could be judged by others. You don't want to be in the spotlight. You don't want to be in the limelight. You know, you might be the best at doing a project. You might be the best at making something or being a good leader. But low self-esteem will make you sit in the back of the room. It'll make you sit there quiet. You might have a solution to a problem, the greatest idea for your organization, but you won't do it because you have low self-esteem. You're going to let other people present their ideas and you will sit there and think that's not a good idea. But because you have low self-esteem, you won't speak up. You will silence your voice. Low self-esteem will make you silence your own voice. And you won't challenge yourself. And you think that you don't deserve to have fun. You don't deserve to have pleasure. You don't deserve to have happiness. That's what low self-esteem will do to you. It'll make you feel that way. It'll make you devalue yourself. Having low self-esteem and low self-confidence, these are the things that can keep you from becoming the best that you need to be in life. Now, I told you the topic of this show is you know, meeting the right person at the wrong time. And this falls into play when it comes to low self-esteem and low confidence. But the key thing about it is, like I said, low self-esteem and low confidence are basically created by your environment. What is going on in your life? What is going on right now? What is making you doubt yourself? What is making you feel you know, like you're just inferior, like you're, it's not going to get better. And I have listed three areas of life to where I feel low self-esteem and low confidence will really impact you. So when that right person does come along, why it may not work or why your behavior is sort of odd and abnormal. You may know somebody and you're saying, I don't understand why they're acting like that. You ever met somebody, you kind of like, you know what? That's a cool guy. That's a cool girl. Why do they do that? They don't need to do that. You know, they're smart. They're intelligent. They're handsome. They're beautiful. They don't need to behave that way. They don't need to do those things. I don't understand it. And it creates a bit of dilemma in the relationships that person is with. And it creates doubts about who that person is with the other people that hang around them and know them. So that is what we want to talk about today. So as we get ready and prepare to take a break, when we come back, I want to tell you the three areas that I feel people really struggle with. And if you listen, I'm going to give you the behavioral response to these three areas that make people act a certain way. So if you were dating somebody and you couldn't understand why the relationship ended, why the person behaved this way, the information I'm about to share with you when we come back after the break may help you to understand that. It may give you some closure. 
It may help you to understand somebody you're with right now or a friend that you see is going through something. So y'all stick with us, man, because when we come back, we're going to dig into this and we're going to get into why people, when they meet the right person, they may act a certain way, why they feel a certain way, why emotionally they start to change or become a different person. Physically, you see their environment and their surroundings change and how they are impacting their environment. So y'all stay tuned, man. We'll be right back with more of the Simply Straight Talk Show. Free your mind, free your voice right here on Simply Straight Talk. Hey, 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 you guys. This is Bourgeois Latte with Latte Java Drips Radio, where we serve it cool while making it hot. We serve in drips and giving you some podcasts and Java vibes of independent artists from all over the world. So head on over to www dot latte java trips dot com slash ljd radio to hear what we are brewing we hope you're enjoying the show as our listeners this show is made possible because of your support make sure you click the subscribe button and leave a comment thank you for being a part of the show and now back to your host reggie maddox Hey everybody and welcome back to the second part of the show. Now we about to get into it. You know I had to set it up before I bring you the actual meat of the topic. Had to get you a little appetizer, but now we finna get into it. Now, just want to let you know, some of this you may say, damn, that's me. Or you might be like, I know somebody like this. I'm about to take it to the back to the brothers, but you know. I got to keep it kind of PG in that area because I don't, you know, uh, you know, anyway, my people know. Uh, but anyway, you know, it's like we really have to start it, starting <laughs> to get into this day because I'm getting tongue tied. Let me just dive on into this. All right. So now that we have provided two emotion areas um, of life, let's discuss how this can impact us when we meet the right person at the wrong time based on our physical surroundings. When we meet the perfect person, but something is not right. It's the wrong time. It's the wrong time. But you know this is the perfect person to be in your life. Okay? So we talked about those two areas, emotional areas. We talked about self-esteem. We talked about self-confidence. Those both play a part into the next three topics that I'm about to tell you about right now. So, Without further ado, let's jump into the meat, okay? Let's go ahead and put the meat on the plate. Get your big spoon. I'm about to scoop it all out, all right? I'm about to scoop it all out and put it on your plate. Now, when we talk about meeting that perfect person, that person that you know deep down in your soul, in your bones, your heart and mind, the spirit is telling you that this is the person that you should be with. One of the things that really hinders us or may set us back from that actually becoming a reality relationship is instability. And this is something that we all deal with. And it's not, you know, it just, you can't just say it's just when you meet that perfect person. It's, you can apply this to relationships in general. When a person is experiencing instability, meeting someone, when your finances are limited, you know, you're unable to afford or, You know, planning is required for fancy restaurants, weekend getaways, international travels, cruises. You basically have to plan out the things you're going to do. You're already planning out for you how you're going to spend your money, how you're going to pay your bills. Now you end up adding somebody else in the mix, you know, who maybe wants to go to games or somebody who maybe wants to be taken out. You know, they want to do things. Now you got to count for holidays and trips and romance and all this type stuff. So your finances are already tight. And I know some people are saying, well, if you can't afford to be in a relationship, then you shouldn't get in a relationship. But here's the thing. We're all social creatures. All of us are social. All of us desire some connection in a way that is loving, that is nurturing, that is 
You know, it is a part of who we are. We all want to be loved. We all want to feel love. We all want a nice, warm body to come home to. We want that connection between a man and a woman. We want that connection. But if you are facing a point in your life where you're dealing with instability, it creates a hindrance. Because now, in your mind, when you're at the point to where, damn, this is a good woman, or like, oh, this is a great guy, but my situation is not that good right now, my finances, whatever, you know, what am I going to do? Possible behavior responses to, to uh, possible behavior, I can't talk possible behavior responses to dealing with instability, especially when it comes to meeting someone or when you're like, you feel like your true love has come in. It hurts. It hurts when you meet the right person and they're right there in front of you. But you know, in your mind that you're, you're sort of unstable in your life right now. Things are not in place the way they should be the way you want. And it's not that you're not working towards getting it there. But it's just not there right now. So having somebody extra is just more of a burden. But here are some of the behavior traits you can see with somebody who's struggling with that. They're struggling with instability, but they're trying to figure out how to have somebody in their life. They want to be in a relationship. They want love. But what they're doing is using these tactics to sort of put a temporary fix on it because they're trying to protect their pride. They're trying to protect their ego. They're trying to protect their emotions. But because the urge, and we get these urges, y'all know what I'm talking about. You get the urge to where you want to feel a physical touch. You want those conversations. So some of the things that people will do, their behavior response to instability is they're going to lie to hide their situation. They'll lie about where they work. They'll lie about their work hours, their schedules. They'll intentionally make it so that their lie puts them in a position to where they're in control of when you meet, when they go out, when things happen. They might say that they work in another state or another city where traveling is difficult. They can't see each other every day. All they can do is talk on the phone. So they're sort of getting something of what they want but they're in control of the situation to where they won't be exposed. Um, they, they avoid commitments. The next thing is they avoid commitments. They don't want to be in a committed relationship because committing themselves mean they got to be vulnerable. They got to commit their vulnerability to this person. They got to commit honesty about where they are in life right now, the struggles that they're dealing with and the things they're trying to fix. Like I said, it does not mean that this person is not working towards becoming stable and getting on steady ground. It's just that they're in the process. And I understand in modern day times, people don't want to be in the process. They want you to say, I want it and boom, it's done. Three minutes, microwave ready life. That's what people want, but it's just not realistic. The next thing is they're seeking other people in distress situations because they feel like I can't date or deal with anyone who has their life together or appears to have their life together. Because once again, that ego and that pride comes in. But then again, dating someone who's distressed and they're normally going to date somebody who has far less than them. They look for troubled people. They look for troubled water. That's where they try to stay because they figure the expectations would not be so high. The expectations is you're not going to want to go on these fancy trips because you don't have the money. Also, you're not going to want to spend weeks off or take weekend getaways because you can't take off work yourself. So they look for somebody who's struggling, but less than them because it still gives them a sense of control. It still gives them a sense of using that as a fallback where, you know, we don't make this, you know, we don't do that. And it's a way of also kind of guilting that other person into not wanting to do those things because they're not up to speed in their life as well. The fourth thing they'll try to do is connecting with people who are already in a relationship. They look to get with somebody who's married because 
getting involved with somebody who's married means I can't really buy you things that you can take home. So that's going to cut down on me having to spend. You know, if we meet somewhere, you know, we can't go anywhere too public. We can't go anywhere too private. You can't really take getaways because you got to explain it to your husband while you're leaving. So everything we do has to be on the down low in secret. And basically we have to either stay home or find a cheap motel somewhere. We have to do things so low key that it limits that person's obligation to that other person. So somebody married means, yeah, they have to stay low key so it works out for me. It cuts back. I don't have to be fully honest and open with them. I don't have to share as much. I don't have to be as vulnerable. And I don't have to let my feelings get fully out there because they can't either. So when it comes to instability, those are some of the behavior responses that a person may exhibit due to the fact that they are unstable in certain areas of their life, but they want human contact. They want love. They want a relationship. So those are some of the things that you may see from them. Some of the things that you may observe in that person who's going through that. Next up is bad attachment. You know, when you meet somebody and you know it's the right or this the right person for you, it's the person you should be with, but you're in a relationship that's either unhealthy, it's not going anywhere. It don't always have to be toxic where there's fighting and angry, but it's just not a good relationship. The love is not there, the desire is not there, the passion is not there. So being in a bad relationship, you know, and it makes you cringe to think of the other person that you're with now. Because you see that other person like, that's who I should be with. But you already know that you can't because you're tied to someone else. So now you're struggling with that situation. You're seeing the possibility of what could be the dream relationship versus what you're dealing with is a relationship that you just simply want out of. But here's the thing. Well, you tolerate it because that's what a lot of people do. They tolerate relationships. Now, here are some possible behavior responses for a bad attachment with the current relationship. And when the right person comes along now, this can be a dangerous situation if the individual doesn't have a positive outlet. One is can be increased resentment and aggression towards their current mate. They'll become real snappy, real argumentative. You know, you know, it's just like it's very abrupt, very rude, very it's downright disrespectful. Like she could really be disrespecting her husband because she's unhappy. She see the potential of what she should be with. Or he could be the same way with the woman. You know, they become more flirtatious because now they're so upset that they're in the situation that they're in, but they don't really have the courage and they don't really want to break away from where they are because they're afraid. They might think, well, this is what I'm supposed to have. This is where I'm supposed to be. Remember we talked about that low self-confidence, low self-esteem thing. Oh, nothing's going to be good. I can't meet anybody, but I just got to suffer with this. That wasn't meant to be. So they become more flirtatious with other people. And some people, because the t- they, they probably met the person like, wow, that is who I should be with. And they know it. So to punish the other person, they start having affairs. Infidelity comes into the picture. They start messing with somebody else. Men and women. Hey, it ain't a male thing. It ain't a female thing. It's a person thing. It's an individual thing. Some people will actually start to reach out and start having an affair just to punish the person that they're with because they don't want to be with them and for not being with a person they want to be with. The other thing is they start neglecting their own personal health, including their partners. They simply let go. They don't try to work out. They don't try to take care of themselves. They don't really care about the home. They don't care about, you know, healthy eating, healthy living, You know, they'll watch their mate sick. It's kind of like, here, we'll just kind of take this. They do the bare minimum. Here, you want to call your mother? You want to call your sister to come over? You know, that's the stuff people will do when there's a bad attachment and they feel like they should be with somebody else. 
they do things like that. This is just realistic, man. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up y'all ass, man. I'm just telling you the truth. These are the things that people do when they're in a relationship and they feel like the perfect match has come along, but they stuck with this person. And the third thing is where they are in life, where you are in life, where they are in life. When you feel as if you have not accomplished your goals and you're not your best self, it doesn't mean that you're not working towards your goals, but progress in regards to your career, your living situation and other endeavors just seem to be moving at a snail's pace. You know, nothing is really obvious to where you're seeing success. Now this creates a whole nother behavioral responses to where you are in life may have a more direct impact on you emotionally and physically, like physically, it'll be like your blood pressure. You start having headaches, tensions in your back, muscle spasm, anxiety. You start experiencing things like that, you know, and then having the right person come along is like a knife being pushed inside of a bullet wound because you're looking at yourself now. Seeing the other two, it was kind of more directed towards other people, but this one, you're looking at yourself. Why am I here? Why am I still making the same money I was making six, seven years ago? Why am I still dealing with the same issues and the same problems? Why am I facing the same struggles that I am facing? Why have I not progressed? This woman is who I should be with. This man is who I should be with. You want to be with that person, but you just feel like your life is not together overall. Cause they may be a business owner and you may be a cashier. You know, she may be a lawyer. You may be a security guard. You feel like it's just too uneven. You are ashamed of where you are. You are ashamed of that. You haven't progressed. You don't have the degrees. She has the PhDs and all of this. And regardless if that person really feels like they care about you, you're still thinking about, where he is. He's making this much money. Or that means the women is going to want to be with him because they're going to know he owns his own business or, you know, he's sort of popular within the community, you know, so women are going to be chasing him. But me, I don't want to deal with that because I'm not ready. I wish I was ready. Those are the things that goes on. But some of the behavior responses that a person may experience or you may see somebody exhibit is one, Social withdrawal from others. When a person feels like they're not where they are in life and they get to a point to where they meet somebody, they feel they should be a certain way. One thing you may see happen is the person just starts to socially withdraw because they feel they can't connect with other people. They feel like, you know, they're just so below every people, everybody, and everybody's sort of passing them by in life. So they feel they don't really have a connection. They don't feel they fit in, especially when they see and hear about other people being successful in getting degrees or going back to school or writing a book or starting a business or their job. They got a promotion. They're making more money. They just bought a new house. They just bought a second car. They've gotten married. Now they're about to have a child. Their life seems to be perfect, but they feel like their life is just not up to snuff. So socially, they start to withdraw. The next thing is they become impatient. And when impatience sets in, it results in rushed and bad decisions. You see this person scrambling to try to make things happen. It's like a quarterback. You ever seen a sports athlete? And the perfect example was the Cameroon soccer team when they played England a few years back in the, um, in the championships in the uh, playoffs to get to the championship. Now, nobody wanted Cameroon to win. But the problem was Cameroon was just, they only lost the score. It was only like, what, one to zero? But the problem was the women from Cameroon, their team happened what you, everybody know in the movie uh, Replacement where Keanu Reeves, they said, what are you afraid of? He said, quicksand. Because one thing after another start to happen and you start to feel like you're sinking and then you're over your head. And that's how they felt. You can tell in the way they were playing. Like it was just one bad thing after the other was taking place on the field. 
to where they just became, they weren't playing as a team no more. They weren't thinking about the game. They were simply just making rushed and bad decisions. And people do that in life, especially when they feel they're being left behind. They start making bad financial decisions, decisions, rushing into relationships. They tie themselves to people who they think may be con- a convenience to help them get up, move up a little faster. And it just sets them back even further. So impatience, when it sets in, it creates people to, it makes people make rushed, bad decisions. The next thing is your mindset changes from a hopeful to it's over. I made too many mistakes. And that's something that happens to people. When a person is not where they are in life and they're starting, they want to date, they want to be in love. They want that relationship. But when things are not where they are, they start to feel like I missed my boat. There's nothing I can do. It's, it, it's done. It's over. And they sort of give up. They sort of fall by the wayside, sit in the back of the room, um, let everybody else call the shots. And they just, they're, they're the caboose of the train. They just sit on the caboose and wherever the train is going, they just sit there and they're happy with that. They're depressed, happy with that. Yes, I said depressed, happy because they're faking that they're happy, but they're depressed at where they are. They're born leaders and all that is just being stuffed down inside and they're burying it. Because their mindset doesn't is, is not hopeful anymore. They just believe that I can't overcome my obstacles. Next is they may also this may also cause a person, you know, to have to take mentally draining. They just become drained. You know, they they just become so drained with life that they don't put energy to anything. You don't see no ambition from them. Because mentally, they're just drained. This has caused them to become mentally drained. And you can just tell the way they talk. There's no excitement. You know, a smile is a smirk. A laugh is is more like a sarcastic laugh. It's short and nothing but just air coming out. Because they utterly just want to stop breathing. Because they feel like it's not going to get better. Another behavior response you may see is, when a person run into the right person will make them feel that they have wasted their time. And it's only going to make them work harder. I messed that up, but let me say that <laughs> some people will feel like I wasted my time. I missed my opportunity for love. This was the person I was supposed to be with. And another person may say, I didn't waste my time, but I need to work harder in case it comes back around. And for some people, if they don't have that mindset of like, listen, if it's meant to be, it's going to come. If I feel this is the perfect person, let me get on my game. Let me start tackling these problems and see what happens. Let me see what can work out for me. But sometimes a person can just really get in the mindset of, listen, I'm done. I I can't get it to work. It's going to take too long. You know, it's going to take two or three years for me to get out of this situation. Nobody's going to give me the time. Nobody's going to wait with me. Nobody wants to deal with me. You know, so they just feel like it's a waste of time. They don't want to work on it anymore. They don't want to progress with it anymore. They're like, that's it. Single life is my life. You know what I'm saying? So those were the three things, man. Those were the three things. So we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back with the final thoughts of today's show. Don't even think about it. We got more straight talk just for you. Hey, this your man Reggie here. Are you looking for some fresh new music? Are you looking for an artist that's got that positive vibe and that positive flow that knows how to flow lyrically? The man you need to check out Tone G Music with songs like Buzzing, Good Deeds, and Pick Up the Phone. Now, these songs are available on Apple Music and other digital platforms. Tone G brings that positive vibe in everything he does. And the music he brings with the reggae style and that smooth, lyrical flow, oh, you know what to do. Y'all check out Tone G Music. Are you ready for the straight truth? Reggie, what's the final word for today? Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And you know what? I'm about to give you all the final word of today's show. Today, we talked about, you know, that perfect match 
at the wrong time. And I think many of us have experienced this, you know, we've just been in some situation that life has put us in or we put ourselves in and we see this opportunity. We see this person that we feel like, man, this is the type of person I need to be with. And more so, this is who I need to be with. And we sort of talked about two emotional aspects in the beginning of the show. We talked about, you know, low self-esteem. We talked about low self-confidence, you know, low self, low self-esteem, you know, we're referring to whether you appreciate and value yourself when it comes to, you know, self-confidence it's more about belief in yourself and your abilities. And then we talked about some of the things that can result from low self-confidence, like shyness, communication problems. You know, then we got into low self-esteem, you know, which that inner voice that tells you that you can't do it or you're not a good person or things are not going to change. You'll never find love. This person don't love you. You know, and these are the things that we have to work on and make sure that we don't let these voices consume us. You know, we have to work on it because it's clear, as we stated early in the show, you know, our, our self-esteem and our self-confidence is really developed by our surroundings. So you have to control your environment, what you take in and what you put out, because what you put out can lower your self-esteem also. But we also talked about in the show, we wanted to dive into sort of the emotional effects and the behaviors that can result from not only people with low self-esteem and low self-confidence, but how it plays a part in a person's surroundings. In the surroundings, we talked about a person dealing with instability in their life. You know, their finances are limited. They're unable to, you know, afford or plan. You know, they got to plan for restaurants, weekend getaways, travel, cruises. Everything has to be planned out because they're on such a tight budget. And as I said, this is not that this person is not working. He or she is working to fix it. It's just not there yet. You know, we talked about bad attachments, being in a relationship that's unhealthy, that's not going well. Then you see you rushed into that and now you wish the right person comes along. You see where you need to be and how that can make you sort of just feel resentment and aggression towards the person that you're with now. You know, you might start to neglect their personal health or neglect them mentally. With the instability, you may start lying to hide, you know, this, the, your situation. You know, we talked about where you are in life, not feeling comfortable about it, not being happy about it, and how that impacts you, yourself, inside, and how you see the outside world seeing you. You determine how the outside world is seeing you. Listen, one of the things that I hope you guys really got out of this show is the fact that life takes patience. The process to success takes patience. And I think one, probably a big question that some people may be asking is, well, if I'm not ready when the right person comes along, does it mean that I'm never going to get that shot again? It's never going to happen. No, I don't believe that. You know, like people say, you know, that if you're not doing right and your blessings come and then your blessing goes away, you know, you miss your blessing that it doesn't happen. No, I firmly believe that if God has a blessing for you, if you're just not on track to receive it, it's still coming. You just have to stay on track because sometimes life has a way to where, yeah, you may not be ready in your situation to be with that person, but you don't know if that person is ready to be with you. Yes, they may be a lawyer or a doctor or have a great job, but mentally you have to figure out, are they ready to be in a relationship? Seeing somebody in a single mindset is totally different than being in a marriage or relationship mindset. So sometimes both people have to grow. You have to understand that your instability, the bad attachment that you're in, where you are in life, all of this is a process to get you to a point to be a better you, but you just can't give up. You can't fall into the behaviors that I mentioned under each one of those categories. The lying, the avoiding commitments, the increased resentment, becoming more flirtatious, you know, thinking negative about yourself, thinking that nothing can get better. You know what I'm saying? 
Because it really is. I've been there to where this person came along and I was like, even today, I think, God, this is the woman I know I'm supposed to be with. But when I had to leave, that was a bullet wound because I wasn't ready. And it was like a knife being shoved inside that wound. It hurts. And there are a lot of people who feel like that. A lot of people who are dealing with that. You just have to understand that everything is a process in life. I've told you guys before about the whole microwave ready thing. Don't fall into the microwave ready. Fall into the happiness and peace. Be patient. It's going to come. Hey, thank you for checking out the show. I hope you guys are enjoying this content. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment. Hey, man, and check out the website. We got a comment session on the website now. It's back up. So you guys go there, drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts about the show. Tell me your ideas about this topic and let me know what you think. I will see you next Friday. Peace. That's it for this week's episode of the Simply Straight Talk podcast. Be sure to sign up to our email list at simplystraighttalk.com and follow us in your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss our next episode. Wishing you a wonderful day from the Simply Straight Talk crew. Simply Straight Talk with your host Reggie B. Come on, let's all join in. Free your voice, it's your choice, all right here. Oh, Simply Straight. Simply straight on.